Welcome back to the Texas Longhorns football Orange Bloods YouTube channel. And this week, Texas starts Big 12 play against Texas Tech. And we're joined now by Chris Level of the Texas Tech Red Raider Radio Network and RedRaiderSports.com, part of the Rivals Network. What's up, Chris? How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? Great. I, I have a feeling um, that Texas and Texas fans, maybe not Texas, but Texas fans are have don't have a true appreciation for how good this Texas Tech team is this year. Yeah, you know, they, they, uh, they're not predicted to do much. And I think that's, uh, you, you know, they've changed their team up here a lot since last season ended. A lot of talk about Matt's future and, and meeting, needing to make some staff changes. But I think they really tried to get their roster to be much older and more mature and experienced and all these different things. And they're hoping a lot of that pays off. Uh, they felt like they were very picky about the guys they brought in. But the main thing is, is you have a, a new guy running the offense really up in the box and then on the field and Tyler Shuck at quarterback and, and, and Sonny Cumbie calling the plays, but Shuck is going to make the most difference for this team this year, no matter what they do uh, because of that position. And I just, this, that position hasn't been great in the last couple of years, bottom line, it just, whether they couldn't stay healthy whether they just didn't didn't play well enough, but uh, they're they're hoping that Tyler certainly settles that position down and plays good football. But that's that's kind of where it starts. And and has he through three games? I think so. Uh, I, I think you're still trying to figure out who he is, and he's trying to figure out how he fits in this whole deal. But he he's he's six five two thirty. Uh, he he can run. He's got a very strong arm. He's got power five experience. Uh, he's got a, a, a big time weapon in Eric Izukama that uh, before last weekend was leading the country in receiving yards. And so I think uh, they're just trying to, I think Sonny's trying to figure out how this whole thing works too. If that makes sense, you know, kind of what their identity is, but he certainly has settled down. I, and the biggest thing about Tyler is he came in and won the team over without having to, to you, you do a lot of things from the state. He, he basically just led and, and played hard, played well, I think everybody was attracted to his leadership and his ability to, to get it done. And so I think that part of it, it won the team over and that's a big step forward gets voted captain gets voted on. He's only been here since mid March. Yeah, no, that is impressive for a guy. And I mean, it's important too for a guy as they take on, you know, in a, a new role at a new spot. And especially given that, you know, the, the established starting quarterback was already there. Um, how different is Tech's offense this year with Sonny Cumbie as opposed to what it's been like? Well, under David Yost, uh, the last two years here, strictly 11 personnel, and they would try to play as fast as they could. That this was, you knew what you were getting. There, there were certain plays they would run out of uh, basically the, the, the same formation all the time. They just moved the, the chess pieces around a little bit, but it was 11 personnel the entire game and going as fast as they could the entire game. And I think that the – and clearly, Coach Yost, you know, not to take anything away, because it had worked in a variety of other places. I mean, he'd coached uh, Justin Herbert. He'd coached, uh, obviously, Jordan Love. There's a lot of uh, big-time quarterbacks that he'd been associated with in good offense at Missouri and Oregon and in Utah State. But it just wasn't working here. And it probably because the quarterbacks either couldn't stay healthy or just didn't play well, period. But Sonny came in, and he's, I think – there's a lot of variety. There's a lot of four wide. There's also a lot of two back sets. There's a lot of two tight end. There's a lot of motion. There's a lot of, you know, it's very similar to what, you know, Cliff ran here or what Neil does up at, uh, at West Virginia where, where, you know, Sunday learned under Neil. And, and I think a lot of what they did at TCU, but they really want to be balanced and run the football a lot. And, and I think everybody here, here is, is more than okay with that. In terms of the defense, um, you know, I, this is a team, really re in recent history that's had some really good linebackers this year is no different Rico Jeffers you know is that guy he's a pick six already had in the Houston game you know what have you seen from this defense uh really last last three games uh, their ability to stop the run I think has been the most impressive thing I and I'm not even sure I'd, I'd be curious I just talked to him earlier uh, I should have asked him this and I didn't but I'd love to know what his thoughts were on if he's the best linebacker on this team because I'm not sure that he is and I think he'd be okay with admitting that because I think Colin Schooler is probably the best player Colin Schooler might be the best player on this team and when I'm factoring in Eric Izukama who I think he'll have a decision to make after the season about staying or going pro I, I think that's a mouthful but I think uh, that that 
the strength is in their linebackers and the depth. They're playing six regularly, so Rico doesn't wow. have to be out there all the time. You know, and Colin doesn't have to be out there all the time. And I think that when Jordan Brooks was here, who was a first-round draft pick two years ago, he's having to play – every single snap you just can't afford to take him off the field now you've gotten to the point where colin or, or and or rico don't have to be out there all the time they can sub for each other and but they're playing six linebackers i think that's where the, the depth is but their ability to stop the run to answer your question would be what, what's impressed me the most yeah so when you, you project out to this texas matchup obviously texas wants to run the football with Bijan robinson and the the you know roshan johnson I mean, do you think that that defensively will be Keith Patterson's game plan going into this game to, to try to, you know, bail out to stop the run and basically force Casey Thompson to try to beat him? Yeah, yeah I, I think uh, it's funny because Schooler's brother obviously plays for Texas. He right. moved him to safety. Yeah, it's an interesting dynamic there from a family standpoint. But I, I think that Keith will, first and foremost, it's about stopping the run and then, take, and then stopping those big shots down the field because there's not – you correct me if I'm wrong here, but there's not been a ton of intermediate passing game with Texas. It's really right. run, 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 and that sets up the, the deep shots down the field. There hasn't been a lot of underneath or intermediate passing game. And so, yeah, you're right. It's it's load the box up, but then and make sure we've got, you know, we, we don't give up one of those shots down the field, uh, you know, to, to Jordan Whittington or whoever it is. So that that first and foremost and and you know there's a lot of this around the league now i mean everybody's go look at the the box scores from last week this team ran for 300 this team ran for 427 this team ran for i mean this is what everybody's doing now and it's not as much throwing for four or 500 yards it is very interesting chris we've seen this conference look very different uh in recent history for a long time and i mean you look around the league and oklahoma state's defense west virginia's defense and I mean, Iowa State's defense and Oklahoma, I mean, it's loaded defenses, good running games. Like, what's happened to the Big 12? It's crazy. Well, there, there, there's some SEC involved in our league now, so maybe it's just kind of morphed it up. No, I, I, don't, I don't know. It's, it's the evolution of football, I think. I think that it, it, it's, it's adjusted. It's corrected. There, there's the tight ends are more prevalent. I mean, there, there, were, there was a decade yeah. plus where there was no tight ends on this roster to speak of. Now you've got really good ones in this league. And, you know, Tech, Tech saw one, a really good one at the University of Houston. You know, FIU had a really good freshman tight end that was about 6'5", 255. So the, the, that, and, and Tech loves their tight ends. I mean, the, the, the Travis Koontz and Mason Tharp got a lot of action last Saturday, and I know they'll be big, uh, you know, the, the, going forward in conference play too. But it's just the evolution of football. Defenses has gotten better. Everybody's running the ball. You know, tempo is not as much fast paced breakneck speed anymore. So I think it's just right. kind of been fascinating to watch. Now, the games aren't four and a half and five hours long. I'm not complaining about that, you know, because that, uh, that th- th- those are some rough Saturday afternoons, man, when you're out there for that long. Yeah, it's like you, three hours into the game, you're like, we're not even in the third quarter yet. This is ridiculous. And you're taking another TV timeout. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what has to happen for Tech to, to pull this upset in Austin on Saturday? Oh, well, you, you can't turn it over. I think your offensive line has to play well. you, you got to let Tyler get into a rhythm and, and and some things like that. Then defensively, I think you just have to tackle well. I think if you th- – th- there's probably a level of – Bijan Robinson can, can have some success. You just can't give up the – you know, the 60 yarder, the, the, the big chunk play. That That's what I think would scare, you know, Texas Tech to death is that if it's like, you know, what the way Rice played it, where would they go? 427, I think was the number you, you, you've got. To, and you're, you're only giving up 50 yards a game right now. You've been really good there, but you haven't also seen the offensive line and the scheme right. and, and, and the kind of uh, backs that you're about to see uh, up until now, because Bijan Robinson, Letty Brown, then Zach Evans. I mean, it doesn't get any easier as you go forward here for the Red Raiders in the next three weeks. But uh, they they understand this. They know what it takes. They feel like that they just absolutely screwed the end of the game up last year and just blew some coverages, messed up a special teams onside kick. I mean, it's just embarrassing. But the funny thing is, is if those things don't happen, Sonny Cumbie's probably not here as the OC. Tyler Shuck is probably not the quarterback here. I mean, wow. it's just wild how, how things like that change uh, the dynamic of a program. Yeah, and, and before I let you go, the study company thing is so interesting to me because I wonder, you know, obviously his time at TCU, you know, it didn't seem like 
he was really the main cook there, especially of late where they've got Doug Meacham and then, you know, Jerry, Jerry Kill, Kill comes in. Yeah. Right. So like, I wonder whether he said something to you or whether you watched on film in terms of like what this tech offense looks like versus TCU's offense last year. Like, I almost wonder if Sark, are they looking at TCU's offensive film from last year to try to get ready for this game? Can they gauge anything from that? Do you think? You talking about Texas? Yeah. Like if yeah. they do some advanced scouting in terms of what tech might look like offensively. I, I'm TCU. sure. I'm sure there's some principles there and, 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 and there, there are, I mean, I think that's what, uh, Sonny, everybody in that TCU situation is there's you're right. There's a lot of cooks in the kitchen. And so you're insulated because nobody really knows who's in charge. And, and yet, and, and, and I think, I think Gary Patterson liked it that way because if somebody left, there was plenty of people there to still run what he, he, he wanted from an offensive standpoint, mm -hmm. but this is clearly what Sonny wants is what you're seeing now. And I think he's trying to figure out exactly what that needs to be, but this is all Cumby right now. Mm -hmm. And so there, there are some TCU principles. He does want to run the quarterback and move the quarterback around a little bit. There, there are some two back sets. There's some empty sets. It's just about creating a, you know, some mismatches, but mm -hmm. you know, I think that between, like I said, Cliff and Neil and, and, and what he did at TCU, it's kind of a mesh of, of that, and then you, you, you flesh it out and try to figure out what works best here uh, in, in, in Lubbock and at and Texas Tech. But I'm sure they are probably looking at some TCU film for sure. Chris Level, check out RedRaiderSports.com and, of course, the Texas Tech Red Raider Radio Network. Appreciate your time, Chris. Be well, man. All right. Appreciate it, brother. Anytime.